another trade that took place yesterday. It kind of, I don't want to say shocked the NBA because I don't think it did, but CJ McCollum is no longer a Portland Trailblazer. He was traded to the New Orleans Pelicans yesterday. This kind of broke some headlines. Obviously, we saw now he went to New Orleans with, with Larry Nance Jr. We saw that Norman Powell and Robert Covington had been sent to the LA Clippers earlier in the week. So we were starting to see this overhaul be put in motion before CJ McCollum was officially traded. And now it's reported that they are in talks. They being the Portland Trailblazers are in talks of trying to trade for Jeremy Grant. Right. So let, let me let me say this. I appreciate. I appreciate what the Port, what the Portland Trailblazers are attempting to do. I admire what they're trying to do. I commend the fact that they finally came to the realization that he and Damian Lillard, it's not that they can't coexist because they can, but there is an inherent ceiling and a limit on how far this team can go with the two of them. And obviously, if you have to prioritize one over the other, as much money as you pay Damian Lillard, it's more important to value and prioritize him than C.J. McCollum. So it's really hard to self-evaluate and to look yourself in the mirror and acknowledge that change was needed. And the Trailblazers finally came to that cathartic moment for them. And I admire that. Here's what frightens me. What frightens me is when the next report that I hear after you trade C.J. McCollum is that you're in talks for Jeremy Grant, then what that further shows me, what that highlights to all of us, is that the Blazers organization still doesn't get it. They're still missing the boat. They're still off the mark. Because as much as I like Jeremy Grant as a talent, is he really going to make that much more of a difference playing alongside Damian Lillard, acting as the two, if not the three? Is that really going to change dramatically how far this team can go? I understand it improves their defense. He's not as skilled individually as an offensive player and as an offensive package, but he can do a lot of things creatively, offensively. He's a great defensive player. That's what earned him that big contract to go play for the Detroit Pistons. But all they're doing is essentially delaying the inevitable. It's essentially going to be Groundhog Day. And perhaps instead of a first round, at best, second round appearance, it's still an early playoff exit. We know what's coming down the road. We just know. Even Damian Lillard posted an appreciation post for CJ McCollum on Instagram today saying, we knew this day would come. Of course, of course he did. Of course he did. Now, again, I understand that we live in this kind of fanciful reality sometimes. And for the Portland Trailblazers, they thought that by trading CJ McCollum, it would create enough cap space to sign Jeremy Grant, to potentially sign another big time free agent in the offseason. Because when they traded CJ McCollum, it granted them about 20 million, it granted them about a 20 million exception. So, in theory, hypothetically, they might be able to woo a big time free agent to Portland in the offseason. But let's be honest, when's the last time that happened? I think you have to go back to Scottie Pippen being traded to the Portland Trail Blazers. Or really not even being traded, but signing with them after his failed marriage with the Chicago Bulls. Otherwise, the next great players with the Portland Trail Blazers, LaMarcus Aldridge, Brandon Roy, 
Greg Old and these guys were drafted by the team. Damian Lillard, they were drafted by the team. They weren't traded. So I just don't really think so 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 what what I what I find a bit faulty with this approach is I I like the fact that they're prioritizing Damian Lillard. And I think the fact that they're moving off CJ McCollum to focus and to try and build around Damian Lillard is the right strategy. But then when you come around and you turn around right after you trade CJ McCollum and you say you're going after Jeremy Grant, you just haven't learned from those previous mistakes, from that previous regime. That that's the problem for me. And if you're Damon Lillard, this is just a complete wash. The season was a complete wash. I don't know if he's going to be coming back at all this year. I'm not sure he wants to. I, I've said Damon Lillard should request out. He should start anew. And if he wanted to give the organization a chance after trading CJ McCollum, that's one thing. That's fine. But if you're Damian Lillard and you hear that the guy who they're targeting to replace C.J. McCollum, Norman Powell, Robert Covington, Larry Nance Jr. is Jeremy Grant and crossing and two crossed fingers that in the offseason you can sign a big time free agent. I don't know if I'd have the most trust, the complete trust in the organization to get that job done. I've seen that that we haven't, that they haven't. So, again, I, I understand that chemistry is important, hugely important. We're seeing it with the Nets and the Lakers, believe me. As a Lakers fan, what, what are you without chemistry? We, we can see what they are without chemistry. That that's th Those two teams have been elucidating the, the importance of, of chemistry, of cohesiveness, but at the same time, I think there needs to be a baseline amount of talent for you to be able to compete for an NBA title, to contend for an NBA title. And I just don't think those two guys alone can can do it. I really don't don't think you can. I mean, even with the Milwaukee Bucks when they traded for Drew Holiday last season in the off season. They obviously had Giannis. Okay, Damian Lillard, fair. Who, who's the comp for Chris Middleton? Are you saying it's Jeremy Grant? If you are, I think you are grossly undervaluing Chris Middleton. But let's say you think that Jeremy Grant and Chris Middleton are the same guy. Well, then who's the comp for Drew Holiday? Now, that's the problem. That's the problem right there. So I feel awful for Chauncey Billups because – I hate this for him. I'd like for him to get a chance to succeed as a head coach. I think he can be a winning head coach. But at the same time, I don't love the direction that the franchise is attempting to go in at the moment. I just don't. And on the flip side, if you're the New Orleans Pelicans, it's certainly interesting. Create some more buzz in New Orleans. You're pairing – you're pairing Zion with C.J. McCollum and Brandon Ingram. That certainly makes them a much more formidable trio. However, all three of those guys do need the ball to be effective. And, uh, and again, they're kind of hovering around that 10th spot in the Western Conference. So this could give them a chance to be a little bit better in the postseason. But we haven't seen Zion at all this whole year. I don't know if he's going to be playing at all this year. So I do have some question marks, again, around the ceiling of the Pelicans. Not a bad trade for them. Not a bad trade for them whatsoever. Try to show Zion Williamson that you're doing all that you can as a franchise to surround him with talent, but the next piece of it is you need him to be playing. You need him to be playing, and right now he hasn't been playing. And that's, that's part of the problem. That's part of the problem.